Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Move Ahead with Dahlia. I'm your host, Dahlia Cahigas. And on today's show, I have my go-to professional photographer, Keith Jones, Mm -hmm. who is also a piano instructor and an actor. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, Mm -hmm. Keith. I really appreciate you for all the work you do Mm -hmm. on my uh, listings, but also... um, you're such a great guy, and I'm really Thank excited you. to have you here mm-hmm. to talk about all the things that you um, help me with in my real estate business. Mm-hmm. So let's touch on the professional photography part first, uh, because we know how important that is sure. in the real mm-hmm. estate industry to have that mm-hmm. professional photography and videography. So tell us about what you do. Uh, well, um, the basis of, of real estate photography is, is rooted in um, having an understanding of architecture. So if, you, if you're, um, you're looking at the space in terms of the horizontal and vertical lines, mm-hmm. um, how to convey the space as uh, you know, widely as possible, because space is what people are buying. Right. Um, as well as um, all of the, the technical things that, that go into creating a good interior, well, interior and exterior um, photograph, um, the interior being the more tricky of the two things to produce, considering light sources, right? considering that you're looking into windows that are much brighter than the the interior of the home or mm. commercial business or whatever you're doing mm-hmm. so um that balance of color and exposure is is very very critical um not to mention the uh, representation of um the lines uh of the walls and um you know ceiling and, and all of that just they need to be straight okay first um, and uh, wide angle lenses, uh, even in digital photography, tend to distort these lines. Okay. So you have to go back and, and um, make a correction for uh, the curvature of the lens. So um, everything looks architecturally true, you know, straight. Okay. Uh, well, nine, you do nine, a great job. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I, I've had some, some experience, uh, some time. Um, uh, I, I spent, uh, six years with a company, um, doing that mostly exclusively for them, but then I started, you know, doing work on my own. Okay. Um, but it also goes back to my college education where mm-hmm. I worked with, um, architectural photographers and, mm-hmm. uh, my instructors were very good. Um, and this was back in the day of film when, um, you're using large format cameras, mm-hmm. um, and it was one exposure at a time mm. and, uh, using sheet film, you know, in, you know, those, the things where you draw the, uh, um, uh, the, um, block to, um, expose the film. Okay. Um, with a hood over your head and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. and even, even up until the nineties, you know, I was still doing that with, a, with a large format camera. Wow, you have a lot of experience. Um, thank you. Yeah, um, it, it's all fun. You know, I I wouldn't do a job that I didn't enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, and working with the agents, you know, I found um, mostly they're some of the uh, most enjoyable um, customers. You know that that I've ever had. Oh, thank you. Um, because of the nature of their business. Well, they, they tend to be nice people anyway. Yeah, I think we are. But 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 <laughs> the um uh the niceness also comes from being in the sales industry. Yes. So well, and we could be pretty demanding too. So yeah, you could well, throw that in. <laughs> there, there's that. But say if if you compare that to uh say working for an advertising agency mm. or um even just um uh, you know, other, other types of usages of, of photography. Um, it's pretty, um, 
easy going by comparison. The good. stress level is is much lower. Okay, good. Well, I'm um, glad to hear that. We're not that bad. No, uh, oh, no, not at all. No. <laughs> so you do uh, professional photography mm -hmm. and um, also videos. So like the 3D sure. Matterport videos, sure. and you also offer drone services when available. When mm -hmm. when you can use drones. Sure, sure. Um, I enjoy that part of it because. When um, you know affordable drones came out, um, you know that would that was such a good thing for real, for real estate. Yes, um, and for me, it it's fun. It's it's it makes you nervous because you're you're working around trees and buildings oh, yeah. and and it's power an expensive. Lines, you know. um, it, it is. It's a little bit expensive. Equipment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you know you have your occasional crashes, which. You and I we, experienced. We had one of together. those on Fairfield, I believe. Yeah, um, <laughs> but the drone survived. It, it lives to this day, so, so that's okay. Um, and the the unique perspective that you get, um, particularly if you have um, a large property, uh, if you have uh, a nice deck, a nice patio, yes, um, woods or parks nearby, schools, all yes. that kind of thing. Double lot, you know, in Chicago, mm -hmm. they're not that off, mm -hmm. you know, very, Absolutely. they're, they're kind of rare. So mm -hmm. especially when I have the opportunity to highlight, um, lots, uh, or something special on the lot, it's definitely a great sure, option. Sure. And, um, with the better drones comes, um, uh, uh, larger sensors and much better quality of, of the the image, mm -hmm. the, the color. Um, if you wanted to, you could zoom in to um, um, a drone image, and you know you can you can pick out a, a very small detail, and it's still sharp. It, it's pretty incredible how good the quality is uh, for drone cool. imaging. Uh, oh, a strange question just came in my head. Mm -hmm. um, do you have to have any kind of like certification or something to um, use a drone in Chicago? You do. You do. Um, it's it's called well, the common reference to the certification is a Part One Hundred Seven, okay, um, FAA certification, hmm. um, and you know it, there there's two parts. One is the registration, which means that you're you're merely letting the the FAA know um, what drone you have. The the num the the serial number of it, and um, letting you know they know what could potentially be up in the air. Okay. If if you're flying. Interesting. Um, and so you have stickers, you have things that you can you can put on it, and the um, flying software that you use also has some things built into it that help help and hinder in some fashion. Mm. Um, they. Um, there's something called geofencing, which um, either allows or prevents you from flying in certain areas. Oh, oh, I've um, heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly around airports, okay. uh, expressways. So even if you tried, it wouldn't let you fly it because yeah, it's in an area that's yeah. not allowed. Uh, it, it will tell you on your screen, you know, NFZ, which is no fly zone. Interesting. And... Um, Unfortunately, there there are a lot of areas around Chicago that are like that. Okay. Okay. Well, um, cool. So I love that service. That's such a great. Um, it is yeah, service it, to have mm -hmm. uh, if if it's allowed, uh, especially if let's say you have a property mm -hmm. uh, by the lakefront. Are you mm -hmm. allowed to fly drones by the lake? It, it depends on the area. If if okay. it's in the city, usually um, they might ask for a permit. Okay. Or something like that. Yeah, or if you're uh, right in mm. front of a park, like mm -hmm. Humble Park, if you have a property in front of Humble Park, get that drone up there. Sure. And sure. Uh, show the park mm -hmm. right in the spot, which is mm -hmm. wonderful for mm -hmm. the buyers that are looking for properties sure, by sure. the park. We uh, we have a a shot that we we did together um, from Humble Park, looking towards downtown, and and that's actually one of my one of my favorite <gasps> oh, images. Yes. Um, yes. Oh, I could mm. use that one. Okay. Mm. Whereas <laughs> Thanks for reminding this me. image, mm -hmm. um, that actually was just taken from a balcony. Is it? Wow, so, it's beautiful. And this is your website, yep. kjonesphotographer.com. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, wonderful. So um, let's talk a little bit about the homeowners. Sure. What would you like to share about getting uh, homeowners to uh, the mind in the mindset of uh, mm -hmm. prepping for the professional photographer to come in and do their work? Sure. Well, first, everyone knows how to clean their home, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily know how to clean for photography. Mm. Because because there, there are a lot of just common items that you would think, well, that's okay. You know, no one is going to mind that my fruit bowl is, is in the corner or that my uh, coffee maker is still there. Mm -hmm. um, or even things like soaps and shampoos, you know, uh, in the bathroom. So I, I put together a list, and, and this is just very common within the industry, of um, items that you would you want to pay attention to as a homeowner uh, or even as an agent, yeah. you know, if you're going to clean the house for photography. Okay. So um, uh, as you're looking in a room, just the, the logic is anything that's distracting. So we start with, um, uh, if we're doing the interior things like window treatments mm -hmm. first, because um, we don't have to be shy about looking through the window. Mm -hmm. unless the, the window's damaged or really, really dirty, which we get that. Sometimes, we yeah, get that, that happens. Too. Um, window treatments, and that serves a couple purposes, um, seeing through and also providing daylight, which is going to help balance whatever el other lighting that we have in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, um, say like um, main living space, um, magazines, uh, remotes, Kleenex boxes. So pretty much like that. things that mm -hmm. are not necessarily clutter, but um, if you have a place for them, put mm -hmm. them away, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we, we tend to highlight certain rooms a little bit more. And I would say kitchen is um, the big very, one. very, very important. <laughs> uh, I'm probably the, the number one. So I, I like uh, a clean counter. Yes. Um, things like replacing the bulb in the, uh, in like hood light or, uh, any under cabinet lighting, if, if that's malfunctioning to, you know, take care of that, because that's going to really, really help sell your house. Yes. Um, and when you said yeah. a clean counter, you not only mean clean it, but also but declutter it, empty, take everything yeah. off mm -hmm. the counter if you can. Yes. Um, because again, we mm -hmm. want to show the space on the counter. We don't, the buyer doesn't care what kind of coffee maker you have mm -hmm. or air fryer. <laughs> right. What mm -hmm. they care about is how much space is in there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there are some cases maybe where say if, if you had an oops and you, you left a burn mark. Uh, on the counter or something. If, if mm. you're sensitive about that, of course, yeah, we'll set something there, but, but, um, All right. But for the yeah. photography is basically yeah. what we're talking about because, um, when buyers come through the property, they're going to see those things, mm -hmm. but at least for the photography to give it the best impression Absolutely. online. Yeah. And, um, uh, second would be bathrooms. Mm-hmm. Um, because we tend to have a lot of clutter in bathrooms. Yes. A lot of products. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that takes some time. And yes. um, the 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 thing that um, is important to me, uh, aside from all of the, these spaces being clean, is uh, saving some time. Yes, which could put you behind when the agent and the homeowner are trying to clean up while you're there taking photos, which unfortunately has happened. To me. Yes, it, it happens <laughs> and it actually happened very often. You. Yeah. So, um, and you know, we, you know, pets, all, you know, yes. And, and move the pet's bed, move the pet's food mm -hmm. and move the pet. Cause we don't necessarily need the pet in the photo. Right. Or, you know, by me while I'm, you know, I, oh. I tend to attract cats and dogs. <laughs> and I don't know why. Um, but they seem to like me pretty well. You're a likable um, oh, guy. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I pay you well for that, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you're, there's just a lot of detail that comes up in this 
process of bringing in Absolutely. the professional photographer. As you can tell, not a, not alone, not just cleaning, but decluttering, putting away uh, products, putting away, um, like I said, any kind of uh, things that you're using in your kitchen, in your bathroom. Mm -hmm. It's just for a few hours. Find a place for it, right? Sure. And, and it's also going to help, you know, when you're showing the home. Yes. Um, it doesn't need to be that clean for, for showing. Right. But maybe close, you know, yeah. it, as it much helps. as you can uh, easily live with, with whatever's, without whatever's missing. Yes, you know, it helps. Uh, you know, mm. of course, if it's something like a treadmill, good luck moving it. But, mm. um, but there are ways of like hiding things. I, I sure. try to, mm. uh, before uh, the photographer comes in, I try to go through the rooms and move stuff around that I think um, Keith is going to tell me that should have been moved. <laughs> mm. And just to kind of, like you said, move things along. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there are times also when, when everyone is doing a favor for everybody else mm -hmm. by all of this happening, because even the homeowner would likely prefer us to be in and out. Yes. Fairly true. quickly. True. Especially if they have pets or kids. Yep. They don't want us mm -hmm. to waste their time. Um, what about things that they can add, like flowers or plants? Is that um, a good idea? Yeah, yeah actually, it, it is. Um, things that are particularly tall, maybe not so much. Okay. So so imagine looking, looking at the space and, well, if you have decorative items, what are they hiding? Mm. You know, are they, are they uh, from the camera perspective, uh, is it hiding an appliance that is going to stay with the home? or some sort of architectural detail that, that, um, people will want to see. Okay. You know, that makes sense. Um, so, um, small, cute, you know, uh, decorative, um, art, you know, art on the walls is, is, is a good thing. You know, I, I would rather see that than a bare wall. Yes. Uh, of course things can be added later and we can, we can talk about that too. You know, sure. the, the digital staging part. But um, uh, the only thing where we, we tend to be sensitive about f um, more photographs is if it's recent photographs of children or family members that maybe you don't want to have um, circulating on the internet. Yes, I always tell that to the sellers mm -hmm. as well. Um, when I ask them to declutter and I see pictures on walls or on... Um, you know, a, a mantle on a fireplace, I typically mention to them that it would be a good idea to put the personal photos away, not just because the buyers don't care about the personal photos, but also because maybe you don't want your family's photos on the internet. Because mm -hmm. um, keep in mind, this is, these photos just don't, get posted and on Chicago websites, they're posted all over the world, right? That's and true. through all these websites. Mm -hmm. So yeah, keep that in mind um, when it comes to the personal photos. Mm -hmm. Sure. And um, uh, master bedroom, mm -hmm. another very, very important room. Yes. Um, even um, say decluttering by removing like a rocking chair or, or some kind of um, movable item that, that, close and closes the space or that, that just adds a little bit okay. too much, um, uh, uh, clutter, you know, okay. um, um, that's not always easy, easily done, but you know, we do set things out in the hall and then put them back afterwards. Awesome. Um, yeah. And let's touch a little bit on the, um, virtual photos. Sure. Uh, because I, I think that's a really important part of your work. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you suggest people use those uh, virtual photos? Um, well, uh, first of all, virtual, virtual staging, yes. So, so this is um, putting in um, furniture mm -hmm. and art and decor that wasn't there initially. Um, it's... Um, People want to see the home kind of like how they would use it. So sometimes an, an empty space doesn't spark the imagination 
mm-hmm. like having something there that represents how they're going to use the room. And um, the the digital staging, which is um, it's software that that um, you purchase that um, has um, uh, groups and groupings of different styles of furniture and art and and that that you can place in afterwards. Um, and it it allows you to change the perspective of um, how the furniture is seen based on where it is in the room. Okay. So it built into the program, it will foreshorten or uh, change the angle to match however it is you place it. And as well as the sizing of, of it, because you don't want the furniture to look too big in the room or too small like it, um, you know, you live in a dollhouse or something. Yeah, that's a skill. It's a skill that you mm-hmm. have to uh, work on uh, to make it look good, which you mm-hmm. have. I've used virtual staging through your um, photography. Mm-hmm. And um, I actually did that now for uh, a condo in Villa Park. And mm-hmm. it looked great. And what I typically do is I don't just post the pictures of the virtually staged rooms. Mm-hmm. I post a picture of the room without the furniture, without the virtual staging, and then I post it with it so that the homeowner or the, I'm sorry, the home buyers that are looking at it online, um, they know it's staged, but they can also see the space blank, empty, and with it. Mm-hmm. Give them their, give them a, a different perception. Sure, sure. And, um, you know, uh, art and color, you know, it, I think it just, it makes it more pleasant image uh, because we get a lot of bare walls. Yes. And and some of those walls are dirty mm-hmm. because, you know, they're expecting the uh, home, home buyer to uh, paint mm-hmm. when they come. So, you know, we're, we're covering, covering up a little bit of that up. Mm-hmm. which isn't necessarily deceptive um, because most people, well, they're going to come and see it anyway. Yes. But yes. but most people are realistic. They're going to know, well, okay, uh, um, I might keep this same paint color, but I'll want to freshen it up. Yeah, for, for and my even, even yeah. with the 3D Matterport, which I love because mm-hmm. the 3D Matterport allows you, the, the person... Uh, looking at the video allows that person to walk through the home Mm -hmm. by just clicking uh, through the circles, going upstairs and downstairs. I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, And it also gives you uh, the square footage of the room if you um, need that. Mm -hmm. Uh, The uh, the 3D Matterport is great because um, you're not hiding anything there, right? You... Mm -hmm. Um, the buyer is going through all the rooms and they could see pretty much everything. Although that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go see the property because you saw it on 3D mm-hmm. Matterport. You should still go see it. But this is just a great way to get an, an, an idea of all the space mm-hmm. in the home. So I always use that on mm-hmm. my listings. Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of it. Um, you see... Um, how you can how you flow from room to room, mm-hmm. which photography, you know, as good as it is, you know, isn't going to give you that. Right. Uh, as well as you know, you're going up and down um, stairs, mm-hmm. uh, so you see the condition of of the stairway as well. Yeah, um, I recently had an agent call me on one of my listings and said, "Oh, there's a washer and dryer," and I'm like, "Yes, <laughs> it's in the the photos there." But if you go to the 3D Matterport, you can walk through and you'll find it. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's just a great tool. Sure. And uh, one of the add-ons of that software is that you can have that converted to a two-dimensional uh, floor plan as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, which a, a lot of agents seem to like mm-hmm. um, because... Um, you know, uh, that's just a, another another tool for for figuring out, well, how, you know, what is the space like? You know, um, um, if if I buy this house, you know, would I even make any changes to it mm-hmm. as well to accommodate maybe a bigger bathroom or, um, 
you know, um, you know, knock out a wall. So yeah, something, that's, you know, that's a great you know. point. Very good point. Um, awesome. So let's, um, our, in terms of the information on uh, the home cleaning tips, mm-hmm. was there anything else you wanted to add to um, that? Exterior. Yes, um, talk about that. Yeah, because that's something we haven't covered yet. Um, exterior is, is just as important, mm-hmm. um, starting with things like garbage cans and cars. You know, we get some where we have disabled vehicles in, in either in the front or the side of the home. And, and that's just a really unfortunate circumstance. Um, really any kind of yard tools, uh, even little things like, like security signs or, mm. uh, flags, you know, um, and for the flags, I, I just say, well, that's just important because, um, it shouldn't block any part of the home. Mm-hmm. And secondly, um, I'm using long exposures and if there's any wind, the flag is going to be moving and oh. it's going to blur. Okay. Um, or yeah, you, I never you're going to see of kind of a repetitive motion kind of, kind of look and it, it's, it detracts. Okay. Um, but I do have some homeowners that insist on having their flags in front of the home. And in which case I, I don't argue. Just say, what's your home? Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll... We're just doing the best we can to mm-hmm. bring your property to the best light. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and even, you know, some light, light yard work you know, would be very helpful leaves, you know, clutter and, you know, anything that, um, you know, is in the grass, you know, um, including, um, if you have pets, you know, clean up for them as well. Um, that's probably, that's a, a big one. That's a, um, that's a, a big one. Yeah. Down Cause the Chicago yeah. ones, we love our pets. We do. But we got to clean up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, and it's kind of um, detrimental to me walking around in, in the backyard oh, yeah. usually. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just one thing. Um, usually doors closed, garage door closed. Um, it's rare that we ever photograph inside the garage unless you have a workshop or you have something that's built in that is Yeah, is something, important something that improves the, the look of the home, uh, mm-hmm. a garage that, you know. They hooked up as the sports bar for the neighborhood. There you go. <laughs> a lot of people do that. And th- there it actually is, <laughs> is very popular. And in that case, I'm, I'm all, all about taking those pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, that's good. Um, you know, someone invests that amount of time and effort and money in, into, um, their lifestyle, mm-hmm. then yeah, other people are going to want, want that. It. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, we get more more of the man caves in the basement, but yes, um, yes, which is always important to fo- to photograph, right? You, you definitely want to mm-hmm. show um, not necessarily the sports teams, but the space that um, sure. the family uses for relaxing. And in mm-hmm. Chicago, there's a lot of finished basements mm-hmm. that are used as family rooms, spare bedrooms, bathrooms. So yes, mm-hmm. important Absolutely. to add. Yeah, and and some of some of these basements tend, you know, they tend to have maybe the fifties or the sixties look to them, but, mm-hmm. but um, um, very uh, nostalgic looking. And if you if you add the the sports bar kind of element to it, uh, you know, um, even as it is without any kind of renovation, I think people find that pretty attractive. Yes, a lot yes. of mid century basements. Yes, there. there are definitely mm. awesome. So, um, in terms of exterior, we covered interior. Anything mm-hmm. else you wanted to mention? Um, um, roof gutters and make sure that those are, uh, free of any kind of debris. Okay. Um, I can digitally remove some of that, you know, particularly if it's hard to get to, but it's um, probably not that, um, I would say not that important. And if, if all the gutters are clogged, then you might you, as well just leave it you just like leave that it like because that. the mm-hmm. buyer is buying cluttered gutters. Yeah, well, <laughs> gutters. that's something that they might want to fix after they purchase right, the home. Right, right. Or, or have the seller clean it up even after the photography. Clean that up before we that's lose the true. property. So that, that could help. The photography can also help in getting things ready before listing. Mm-hmm. So. Now, one thing that I get uh, fairly often is... Um, 
in the gap between um, doing the photography for the home and then um, having people come to uh, view the property, homeowners will say, okay, well, I'm going to paint this wall or I'm going to fix these stairs or I'm going to remove this appliance. And that's another case where I can make it look like how oh, they, they want it, but yeah. not, not necessarily how it is right like now. Like if the treadmill's in the way, but um, this week after the photography, someone's picking up the treadmill, can you remove that treadmill from the photo? Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Sure, sure. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, awesome. That's a, a great lot, idea. I'll keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's move on to sure. talking a little bit more about some other things that you're involved sure. in. I'd love mm -hmm. to talk about your piano instruction that you offer. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? And a little bit after that about the acting that you do. Sure. Sure. Well, um, I like to think that I come from a, a, a musical family, although it was, it was mostly my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a singer. Okay. For for many years, awesome. Um, and he he was um, um, what they call a barber shopper, uh, meaning barber shop quartet and chorus oh, singing, which is yes. four part harmony. Um, so I grew up twenty plus years of going to these shows and competitions and various things. Cool. And his quartet um, uh, specialized in comedy. Mm -hmm. So they would sing and, and they would do these little skits and things that related to the music, uh, lots of costumes, uh, you know, fake mustaches and whatever. <laughs> um, so, but, but my particular instrument, uh, is piano. Uh -huh. And, um, I like to think that it was inspired, uh, by my dad. Uh, uh, he was more like a, um, a frustrated violinist as well. Mm -hmm. Um, just, wanted to progress, but never really had, had the time for it. Um, and he, uh, I was the fourth of four kids. So by the got, time they got to me, you know, no one else had really done it. So, mm. so I started, uh, piano instruction pretty early and I, um, I just, I liked it from a very early age. I remember five, five years old playing and, and trying to decipher my sister's, um, lesson books, mm -hmm. um, which she gave up on very quickly. Um, but, um, after, uh, private instruction, um, middle school, high school, uh, played the French horn in, in school and, uh, and took piano lessons, um, did some college, uh, in music. Um, but I went to college also for photography. So that mm -hmm. was interesting. Yeah. Uh, it was a, it was a very busy, busy both, schedule. Both creative yeah. outlets, right? Um, so, and, and again, it, it became more of a, um, a word of mouth situation as far as teaching. Um, not everyone is immediately drawn to teaching when they, when they perform. Mm -hmm. Um, they certainly know which type of instructors they prefer. Those who are kind, those who help you progress without, um, bullying, um, and those who just simply have a lot of information off the top of their head that they can share with you. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's, um, it's almost better in a demonstration mm -hmm. and in from discussion than from reading it in a book. Although we do plenty of that as well. Okay. Um, I, I do like to start with uh, pre-reading kids, um, and there are books for that. Um, Suzuki Method is, is, is a, a different one, but that's um, a different subject uh, in terms of that teaching style. Um, but um, I like, and, and this goes back to the theater thing as well, uh, singing, clapping, and um, acting out what it is that you're doing at the piano mm -hmm. from an early age. Cause, cause kids mm -hmm. are entertained mm -hmm. by all of that. Yes. Um, that's another technique in, um, te teaching language. So making it fun, um, making it a game in some respect, but okay. still instilling the, the idea that, um, there is a discipline to it and that practice 
pays pays off in yes. the end. Um, so um, I draw a big correlation between um, music and photography and and the acting and all of that. It 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 uses a lot of the same uh, techniques for memorization mm -hmm. or um, um, creativity. And um, I would do it if I wasn't paid, but it, it does help cover expenses and that kind of thing. Because you think, well, it's teaching piano. What what could that possibly cost you, mm -hmm. you know, to prepare for that? But actually, I buy quite a lot of sheet music, yeah, uh, a lot of the preparatory stuff, mm -hmm. and um, uh, as well as a lot of driving. Yeah, and I was going to ask you, mm. so do you go to mm -hmm. the students' homes or do they come to you? Both. Both. So I have um, I have a pretty nice piano in the in the front, and, and I have created it, created it as a, a studio space. Okay. Um, so I have shelves of music nice. and um, a metronome, all, all, all the various other things that you would use. And where um, is your space at? Uh, I'm in Mount Prospect. In Mount Prospect. Yeah. Okay. So it do, do you um, teach students that are in your area? Mm -hmm. Do you have students in Chicago? I do, yeah. Um, generally, uh, North Shore area. Okay. Um, but some in Chicago. I've, I've gone as far as Elgin. Okay. To, to go and teach. Um, but then, you know... At that point, if it's that far, then I then I do ask that the parents or the student pay for travel. Right, you need to be compensated for that because mm -hmm. that is a, a good drive. Okay. Um, but um, it, I think this has become the the joy of my life, really um, teaching. Um, and I remember, like asking. My instructors, well, well, why do you do this? What you know, mm. what's in it for you? Yeah, you know, and and I, I think um, uh, now you all know. of them, all of them, really <laughs> express just just the joy joy of sharing it, yeah, and um, seeing success. Yes, um, I'll, I'll give one example. I I have one student who is fairly advanced, um, and by advanced I mean. Um, music that you would hear in a concert hall, um, you know, if you, you know, went out for an evening. Yeah. Um, and the um, young man is 14. Only 14 years 14, old. 14, yeah. Wow. And um, again, um, family in the North Shore. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just went through the, the AIM program, mm -hmm. uh, which is, um, it's um, got a certification process uh, uh, that gives kids credit for having passed certain levels of music mm, um, okay. um, achievement. Um, so um, they're asked to perform several pieces of differing styles um, and then um, things like music theory, you know, slight, some writ written and um, verbally given mm -hmm. uh, testing. Right. Uh, for their knowledge, uh, as well as sight reading, mm -hmm. which would mean looking at a new piece of music and playing without any practice. Okay. Um, and, and he did really, really well. And, and, and it almost made me feel better than, than him. <laughs> you were so proud of him. Yeah. Yes. Like and, it's your own child because you've guided him through this. Absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, I, I knew all the steps along the way. Yeah. And um, uh, I, I like seeing that dedication. It, it actually inspires me to be more dedicated myself. Yes. So. Yeah. Your, your students teaching you too, right? Oh, yeah. Just yeah, like our always, kids teach always, us. Always, always, always. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. And so um, you, you give lessons in piano. You drive to students' homes or they come to your, uh, where is it, Mount? At Mount Prospect. At Mount Prospect, uh, your location in Mount Prospect. And um, do you do any like online classes um, or do you have any courses online or anything? I had, I had requests for that, particularly as 
COVID was a problem. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, I, I tend to shy away from the mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. um, because I, you know, I feel like physical demonstration yeah. is, is um, a, a better use of everyone's time. Yes. Yes. The one-on-one -on -one is huge. I mm -hmm. understand that. And then uh, let's move on to your acting sure. career. I'd sure. love to learn a little bit more about where you do your acting, um, what organization, or is mm -hmm. it a nonprofit, uh, things that you are involved in with that? Sure, sure. Well, uh, again, like like many things in life, uh, this came to me kind of on a whim mm -hmm. or uh, the, the fortuitous serendipity, the, the happy accident. <laughs> Um, uh, I was, uh, uh, teaching piano for, uh, within a, a dance studio and the, um, one of the dance instructors also happened to be a choreographer for a local theater group. Mm -hmm. And so she, she knew that I was, I was pretty, um, open-minded and at, at the time slimmer than I am now, <laughs> um, and you know, I had taken some dance classes, particularly um, ballroom and and um, you know Latin and that kind of thing. Nice. So, so um, they were putting on a production of West Side Story, and now uh, the the part that that um, you and I know about is the 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 funny thing was that um, the part that was open was for um, a shark and not for a jet. Right, and they're not talking shark like the water. The, right, the gang member mm -hmm. <laughs> of the sharks. Mm -hmm. And who are the gang members of the sharks? Um, the sharks are Puerto Rican. Okay. Um, and um, I'm a. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a pretty white guy. <laughs> so um, I did what I could to blend in. You know, I I worked out a little bit. You know, I. I, I did a lot of uh, extra dance instruction. Um, I used the um, you know spray tan and, and all that kind of thing, <laughs> looking a, a little bit more uh, uh, swarthy. I, I wish I would have seen that. Is it oh, on video anywhere? I, it, it, is, love to it is. See I'll, it is. I'll share it. <laughs> um, but and and so that was my reintroduction into theater oh. from high school many years. Very previous. cool. Um, and you know, like many things, you try things once and you you get hooked on it. Yeah. Um, and so, and but the the amazing thing about community theater is that um, if you don't come in with a lot of skill, mm -hmm. um, there's still a lot of inclusion, and you have you have time. Typically, rehearsals are three months. Wow. Um, so, uh, and that, that's another thing with, with, you know, even theater in general, not necessarily musicals, but, yeah. but, um, the thing that, that helps you to, um, uh, overcome stage fright, mm -hmm. which, which is another reason why I did it. Yeah. Um, because as, as a pianist, um, performing is a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. So making a mistake is, is something that you, you tend to take to heart right. a little bit. Yes. Whereas, you know, when, with theater, um, the thing that you're doing, um, may seem spontaneous, but you've rehearsed that thing so much, you know, where your spot on the stage is, you mm -hmm. know, what your line is, you know, what the, the person that's speaking to, you know, they're all of their lines mm -hmm. and, and the lines that cue you to so speak it flows. Right. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and I found that very comforting oh. um, because, yes, I'm going to look out and I'm going to see maybe, you know, three to five hundred people out there looking at me, uh, which would normally make me pretty, yeah, pretty, make ner anybody pretty nervous. Make, yeah. But um, you get caught up in the moment. You get caught up in, in what you practiced. And, you know, we have this, these discussions at a group. Uh, in in a group as as well um, about well when you finally get to the performance time, it's not the time to be nervous. It's the time to relax and have fun with what you're doing because that's the reason why you're there in the first that's place. That's right. Is Remem to have fun remember with the why, right? Why mm -hmm. you're there? 
Yeah, yeah. That, that could help. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd still be a hot mess trying to well, do that. Well, you know. Um, I've never done it. Mm. I remember uh, waiting in the wings be- before the the epilogue portion of uh, West Side Story. And it was like. Your heart was pounding oh, out of yeah. your chest. Because, you know, I, I could I could look through the curtain and I could I could see um, we, we were sold out. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, um, it's West Side Story. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't but but then, then you hear those the first notes. Uh, of the music and and if you've ever seen west side story or heard the music of it it's like oh my god yes you know um sondheim and, and bernstein um um and and everyone else involved in, in the creation of that show mm-hmm. um it's just um it's timeless and, and um, yes, beautiful the, music. You know, very, very beautiful music. Mm-hmm. And I, I felt so lucky to be involved in that that project. That's great. And who um, is the organization that has sure. that or that, um, that you you were involved in? Mm-hmm. And if you're still involved in, sure. That was um, uh, Palatine Park District. Okay. So um, the theater is is off of uh, Northwest Highway mm-hmm. in Palatine. Mm. Um, and is that still? Are you still involved with that? Um, I I haven't in in some time. I've I've moved on to other groups. Okay. Because other groups are actually a little closer to me. Yeah. And who um, are you involved in um, now? Uh, it's called uh, Trinity Players Chicago. Uh, they're in uh, Jefferson Park, mm. but um, uh, some of the other the my fellow actors and and um, people involved uh, actually live a little closer to me as well. And. Um, this is the group that I've done the most uh, shows with, and do you um, have something coming up soon? Um, we do. We we um, we're in the kind of the early stages where you have to um, get the rights to do okay um, certain shows. So mm-hmm. uh, this year we go every year with a um, alternating between a musical and and a, a regular play. Okay, this is a, a play year. Um, Whereas we had, um, we'd done a variety show before mm. the, as a fundraiser, which included music from uh, uh, Godspell, uh, which uh, another show that I, I really like a lot, but it, the cast also happens to be very small in that. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, Trinity Players, uh, we have a website. We also have a Facebook page. Okay. Trinity and players, Trinity players, and they are in Jefferson Park. Jefferson Park, okay. yeah. Um, well, we'd have to look that up, uh, mm-hmm. follow them so that we could find out when the next performance is coming sure, up. Sure, sure. Awesome. And um, how does uh, anyone that's interested in learning more about your piano lessons, how uh, would a listener be able to get a hold of you for um, the piano lessons? Well... Good question. You know, I, that that really is a that you, you got me something there. It, because it's it's more of a um I go by referrals uh-huh. more often than, than really advertising. Okay. Um because I, I tend to find more serious minded people. Okay. Because if they contact me first, then then they're they've thought about it for a while. Okay. That's um, good to know. But I you know, I regularly pass out my uh, business cards. You know, um, either my photography business cards right. or... So, again, yeah. we can mention kjonesphotographer.com. Mm-hmm. So, uh, anyone interested in uh, the professional photography side, uh, videography. Mm-hmm. And um, you also do portraits, model headshots, right? Mm-hmm. So, there's some more things involved there that you could look at on the website. Sure, sure. Um, um, family portraits. You know, yes. I, I do do that all the time, and um, that that isn't such a hard stretch from from doing the real estate because uh, yeah, I get a lot of agents uh, or even homeowners mm-hmm. that say, well, you know, you know, you did a, a good job photographing the home. You know, do you do portraits? Will you do a headshot for me? Okay, uh, for business or whatever, and and you know, I love that mix mm-hmm. of things because it keeps it interesting. Well, you know, yeah. I, I recently had a, um, uh, or I recently posted a podcast uh, with uh, Northwest Side CDC, mm-hmm. uh, which um, they are a nonprofit and 
they um, help small businesses mm-hmm. in uh, in terms of from like the beginning stages all the way to establishing a business. And um, as an entrepreneur, I know how important it is word of mouth, right? That people mm-hmm. um, know who you are and that uh, people refer you because mm-hmm. I refer you. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I use you for my uh, real estate listings. So I know that you are, um, very dedicated to your mm-hmm. work, Thank you. especially mm-hmm. in the photography, but clearly as a piano instructor and actor, um, mm-hmm. those are all creative aspects that I would not know. I would, mm-hmm. wanna, I would not want to handle. Um, mm-hmm. I love that you get out of your comfort zone and that you, get out there and you try things. That's the only way you're going to know if you're good at it. Of course. It, yeah. Right. Or if you love it. And even mm. if you're not good at it and you love it, you just keep trying till you get it right. <laughs> that's, that's true. Particularly with, the, with the theater, because, you know, um, you know, unless you started young, you know, theater is, is, is a, a, um, a tough thing for, for yeah. a lot of folks. Yeah. And, uh, and music. Right. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. um, music can be very challenging in the beginning. Um, and many people give up on it when, when they're children, they learn it and play it. it it's put in, into their daily routine if they mm-hmm. use it all the time. But as they get older, adulthood, they let go of those things. Mm-hmm. And they're very good outlets for um, adults to, you know, sure. release stress. Mm-hmm. and enjoy something other than having to work. Absolutely. So I, that's, that's one of the reasons why I always promote um, things like music for mm-hmm. my children and for, you know, other people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, the thing I, I tend to talk about with, with my friends who are also creative people is how um, as you age, um, the more kind of creative things that you do music, um, you know, photography, really, really, um, uh, any, anything, it, it keeps your mind young. It keeps, yes. um, yes, keep absolutely. You, um, um, alert and, uh, keep, you know, a strong memory. Mm-hmm. Um, you always so, want to learn new things. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in my example of the podcasting, which is something new to me that I got out of my comfort zone, I feel like you know, now I tell people that I talk to about this work is if it's something you really want to do, just try it. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, it's a little nerve wracking, but you get over it and it's fun. So get out of your comfort zone and try something new. It's good for your health. It's good for your mind, Mm -hmm. as you mentioned. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that you got all these things going on and they're all things that you really like to do. That's very Mm -hmm. rare. (laughs) In my, the in the sphere of people I know, most people have to work, right? And yeah, and uh, they're not looking for their outlets, and they should. You have three really great things that you're doing mm-hmm. that are helping you be creative, and you enjoy them. Mm-hmm. But great, is there anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? Hmm. I don't know. Um, we talked about how people can reach you on your yeah. website. Mm-hmm. Again, that's kjonesphotographer.com. And um, did you want to give out a number or anything? Sure, sure. Um, if you want to contact me for uh, either um, real estate photography, you know, um, family portraits, any of that, um, my phone number is 847-828-4695. And again, my first name is Keith. Um, although you, you just uh, call me anything, I'll respond. <laughs> That's all right. Um, and uh, as well as uh, if you're looking for uh, piano instruction. Yes. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you, Keith. It was sure. a pleasure having you here. Um, much success in all you. the things you're doing. Um, I know you're an excellent professional photographer, so mm. I know that you will continue to excel in that. So again, thanks for being mm-hmm. a guest. Thank you very much for having me. You know, this is a... Um, pretty, pretty rare, rare thing. And, and, um, you know, um, can't wait to see, you know, um, how you progress with your podcasting. Thank 
Thank you. Um, thank you. you know, I appreciate that. I've been that. a fan since you started. Thank you. I appreciate right. that. Mm. So thank you so mm -hmm. much for following today. And if you found this information valuable, please reach out to me uh, if you have any questions about the topics we had today. If you want to reach out to Keith, uh, we gave out his information. Um, my number is 773-879-4855. You can find me on all social media platforms at Dahlia the Realtor. I would love it if you would share this episode, follow me, and subscribe wherever you listen to the podcast. I'll see you on the next episode of Move Ahead with Dahlia. Make it a great day. Bye. Bye.